for a while. He's going to give us a bit of a hand here. This is private work. So, he's from the 22nd North Carolina Regiment. Doesn't he look well? He would scare me. Private work, is, he's in an infantry regiment. But what often happened was that sharpshooters would target the artillery. Artillery is a very dangerous job. And people would get hurt or people would get shot. And so they draft in people like Private Work here to help run the artillery. And they would train him. So Private Work, what have you got there? Colt Dragoon. This was the nearest thing to an automatic weapon that was on the battle. <laughs> when your battery was being overrun, <coughs> an order was given to load double canister. And these were effectively like tin cans full full of ball bearings. Okay? Canister shot was used to fire out, but when you were loading double canister, things were bad. By the time they would come past the double canister, Roy and his revolver was the only thing standing between him and heaven. I'm sure you're happy about that. Not sure. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you notice what Roy's wearing here, he's dressed in a Confederate uniform. Our group, the Ulster American Historic Society, we do both. We do the 22nd North Carolina. We also do a group called the Ulster Guard, who is from New York. And if you see there, we have a mixture of both North and oh, South. Okay. And they wear grey, don't they? Yeah? No. Roy in his bottom is wearing a stuff. Will you tell him, Roy? What are you wearing in the bottom? It's called Orla. We would have more or less worn anything that was available. Even our jackets changed style. This was a Richmond Type 1, which had it belt loops. Very, very useful because your belt was your main thing for carrying all of your equipment. It was based on the belt. Uh, as things went on, Funds and supplies ran out, so things like these belt loops went, epaulets would have gone, and the as for treasures and stuff, you, you got whatever you could find, basically. Somebody wrote one time the way he told the difference between a private and an officer in the Confederate Army was of the amount of holes they had in the seat of their pants. <laughs> and by the end of the war, many soldiers were found barefoot, they had no right. shoes. In fact, Gettysburg, I don't know if you knew, but Roy, there's a, a theory that it was fought over shoes. That's right, there was a factory full, reputed to be a factory full of shoes, and that was the cause of the battle of Gettysburg. Now, people would say no, people would say the armies converged because it was a natural road system, but as Roy says, the other story is that the Confederate commander had an idea that there was a factory full of shoes, so he was given permission to go sorry to get his men's shoes. In fact, it's quite interesting. Robert E. Lee's letters, I'm working through them at the minute and reading them for my thesis. And basically, he spends a lot of time talking to his wife about socks. He does. <laughs> Mary Lee was sitting knitting socks like a factory, the, the commanding general of the South. And he was asking his wife to send him socks and to send socks for the men. And it's quite interesting. This tells a lot about Lee. He writes to Mary and he says, can you send me six pairs of cotton socks? So Mrs. Lee gets down and gets six pairs of cotton socks. Lee keeps two to himself. He gives two to a friend. And then he talks about his friend's servant. Now that's a code word in the South. He didn't like the word slave. So a black slave was called a servant. And he said that he gave this servant the last two pairs of socks because a man like him wouldn't have any socks. So this black African American slave is running around in a pair of Mrs. Lee's socks. <laughs> Doesn't it tell you how complicated it all is? So you have these ideas about race and then you have these ideas about compassion. And they both go round and round in circles. Right, come over here to look at your, your kit very briefly. Turn around there and show the, the lovely people you're, <clears throat> you're behind. Uh -huh. <laughs> this is Roy as his canteen. His canteen was put on last. 
Why? Because if he's marching and he gets thirsty, it's not a good idea to have it put down underneath that. He then has his sack, or his haversack. And in this haversack, this is what Roy carries. This is his life. That was my mom bag. That was his <laughs> mom bag. But also, this is called a blanket roll, or a French roll. And anything you have, like your shirt or your socks, you put in this. And he would carry it like this. So here's Roy with his shirt, or with his, sorry, his, his blanket roll, his bag, and his musket. Doesn't he look scary? No, this is brilliant. Kind of serious. It does. This one actually had a double purpose. If you wanted to have a candle, that is a great candle holder. What I would say is that during the Civil War, Hello. Hello. <laughs> yeah. You want to stick your thumb in there and keep it up? That is the most of what a bayonet was used for, in all honesty. Men didn't like the bayonet because they were too civilized. They were shopkeepers and they were farmers. So you're out in all the wellers, your gun's rusted, your bayonet's rusted. Lee actually, one of his first engagements, he marched his men for three days in the rain. When he got to where he had to be, his powder was wet. He couldn't do anything. He stood for another two days. His men were soaking. They ran out of food, so he marched them all back again. And because of that, Lee, his first command, didn't go so successful. He was actually demoted. He was sent to Florida to build some gun emplacements, or a fort, I believe. And it was only later then that Lee would come on. But could you imagine if somebody did charge at you with this? I have been on the other end of one of these. He has, charges. actually. Fortunately, there are only half of those. Do you ones. notice that this bayonet is in square? What shape is it? Diamond. Diamond, triangular. Any nurses or doctors in here? No? Does anybody know why it is triangular? Introduced air into the wind. Some what? Prevent suction. Prevent suction is another reason. Can't stitch it. This is us actually doing some of our reenactment stuff. And uh, oh, here I'm doing that. it's a great way to learn history. When you've actually got to put yourself in the character, um, it's almost like reading between the lines, does that make sense? You actually put yourself into that person's situation. The first time I saw half a dozen of these guys coming at me would be in it. I didn't take too long to find out how to run the other direction. <laughs> so you really just question the bravery of some of these men. And the fact, even the sheer weight of the kit and stuff, and they were marching 10, 20 miles, fighting a battle after yeah. that. Behind is a chaplain's frock coat. It's a standard officer's coat. I would have been a second lieutenant or lieutenant in the American uh, Army. I have chaplain. Insignia here, a black facing to the note of chaplain. They weren't treated very well. Uh, they were sold by their officers because they did a good job. They did everything. And they were shot for preaching too long. They were yeah. shot for preaching too long. <laughs> I will wrap up. <laughs> run out of time. Maybe I've talked too much, Ronnie. Um, I'll be happy to take a question or two if you want. If not, if you want your tea, fair enough. <coughs> By the way, I, I just wondered, were the army, both armies, were they all, all or mostly volunteers or conscripts and were they paid a day's wage? Or? They were and they weren't. Uh, at the start it was volunteers. As the war progressed, we talked about the draft, so conscription came in to, to both sides. They were paid a day's wage. And if you were a Yankee soldier, we were probably paid okay. If you were a, a, a confederate, uh, Roy has some money over there, some confederate money. Well, probably you wouldn't have done it that often, and when you did it, it was worthless. A lot of the confederates, basically, they were fighting. They believed that they were fighting because the North had invaded their country. In fact, most of the, the fighting was done in Virginia. Uh, Virginia was destroyed completely during the war. And people were fighting for their wife, their child, for their political ideology. That was the that was the push of it.
Anybody else? Yes? I was just wondering why were the American Indians doing all this thing? Ah! <laughs> Very interesting. That's a really good question. Westward, they were, they were doing Indian things. Uh, they were chasing buffalo and stuff. But the Cherokee fought for the South. And in fact, the last Southern general to surrender was a Cherokee Indian. He had a, a, a whole regiment or detachment of Cherokees that fought for the South. By that stage, the South was willing to take anybody. And in fact, they were making inroads into Britain. They wanted Britain to come back and join. They wanted them to recognize them as a country. And they wanted to bring in Britain's supplies and army to help them. Uh, Britain couldn't do that because of the slavery issue. Anybody else? No? Listen, thank you very much. It's been a, a pleasure. So. Thank you. Thank you.